Beautiful. Hello, wonderful humans. Welcome to our March Equinox Regenerative Roundtable. So this one is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to try to do it as democratic as possible. So what this looks like is all of us have three minutes and 33 seconds to take the floor and share whatever we would like to either ask a question and let people respond to that question and host a dialogue for it or do a presentation or whatever it is you would like to share with your time. Now, if you don't have anything you'd like to share, you also have your three minutes and 33 seconds to give to somebody else. So if the topic is going and it's about to end and you want that topic to continue going, you can put your time towards that topic and we can extend it. So this way we're having conversations what everyone is agreeing to want to have. We have a short cutoff time so that we can keep this quick and um, keep flowing. And hopefully this can handle a lot of people being able to share and express what they would like to. Um, so that was a very simple format for this. Does anyone have any suggestions on how we might improve on that before we get going? Excellent. Um, now, there's not that many of us, which is awesome as well. And we can go around as many times as we need to. So after everyone's had their three minutes and 33 seconds to speak, um, we've gone through it one time. We can do it again and do it again until... We are done having our conversation and the momentum has stopped. I'm going to be pretty insistent on stopping someone at three minutes and 33 seconds. And then at that point, I'll ask if anyone wants to dedicate their time towards extending that topic. And then if nobody does, then we'll close it and we'll move to the next person and or topic. Okay, I'm going to ask one more time in case anyone has any suggestions on what they would like to do to improve on that. Okay. Um, before we get going today, and part of my three minutes and 33 seconds, I just wanted to share a video that I just put together. I was going to do a screen share, but um, Jitsi wasn't so great at having me do that with my phone. So I made a quick video going over the Seeds Light Wallet, because some of you aren't familiar with that. People aren't really sure what happened with that. So I'm going to be able to share so let me go to here. Can everyone see this? Yes. OK, so. Are you able to hear what's coming no. through? No, we can't hear or it. Very... I paused it right now, but I just want to ask if you can hear it. It was very silent. It was not uh, passed through. It is a little blurry and silent. All right. This isn't going to work very well. Never mind. I will just share this link for y'all if you want to watch that. So that's a six minute quick overview. Feel free to go and watch that after this if you would like. And we can ask some questions about it. Okay, um, I'm going to stop talking now because I'd love there to be a round of people to be able to share first before I keep going on anything. So if you would like to share a topic or ask a question or anything, please put your hand up and I will call on you. Stephen. Well, I can't hear you and I don't know where you went. Said so you put your hand up and then you disappeared. But hey. We can't hear you though, so your mic's not working. Beautiful family, and I love seeing the little one. So while you're troubleshooting that, we can go to the next person. So maybe we can, yeah, whoever puts their hand up. Yeah, I'm happy to have them up and Rocky. Go for it, Justin. 
Hey y'all, what's up, what's up? It's good to see some familiar faces and to um, kind of check in. I saw the posts and I figured I'd stop by and, and say hello and, and just kind of share a personal update and, and also maybe share some things about what we've been working on and see if there's interest in expanding upon that at all. Um, so yeah, I'm Justin Joseph. I'm in Poptoon, Guatemala right now. Um, after spending, been for about four months or so. Um, and, um, and I was a part of Samara. Uh, I was also involved in Renaissance Explorers, which was kind of a, a predecessor to some of the, the kind of seeds DAO that's been the collab DAO that I've been kind of developing. Um, and also a kind of founding member of Samara Trust, which was a DHO that was in the Seeds Commons. And so I've had the chance to kind of be in Seeds and um, be a part of the kind of a, a networking organization, Samara, um, and kind of play between that and Haifa and all different movements. And so <clears throat> that's some of my, my history, my background. Um, and what I'm kind of bringing here today is just kind of an update on Samara Trust in kind of four categories really quickly. So over the last year, uh, we were able to kind of take Samara Trust and establish it um, as what I would call, or what Joachim named a, a type two regenerative organization. Um, and I say that because it was able to accomplish three, four kind of major things. Um, it was able to have a, become a member-led and operated organization uh, connected to a kind of a network of individuals, communities, organizations, and ecosystems uh, in service. Uh, I was able to establish a pilot prosperity pool, which is kind of a regenerative resource pool that recognized and accounted for multi-capital contributions and transactions uh, through a human digital interface uh, that governs the financial and social ledger. Uh, we were able to kind of set up a governance system and an infrastructure for individual and collective decision making, uh, particularly around the prosperity pool itself, but also other things like member roles and, and organizations, as well as able to kind of establish a digital, social, and organizational infrastructure uh, that was able to be utilized and can still be utilized by members, non-members, communities, and organizations across our network. Um, so we really kind of had the chance to really establish some of these, these kind of core aspects of, of, of being an organization, also a regenerative organization, as well as a DHO. Um, and so we're happy to kind of share that journey, some of our artwork or stories or, or where we're going or where we're coming from, but just want to kind of give that update that we had some success and a lot of that was, most of that was bred from a lot of the experiences we had in, in Seeds in Samara and have kind of been working individually and collectively to continue on that work. Um, and, and hope to kind of bring it back in any right ways as we see what's alive and going on in this in this movement and in the system. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that. Does anyone have any thoughts or reflections or questions for Justin? Chris? Yes, which uh, DAO tool are you using for Samara? So we're actually, we've actually done everything off, off chain. Um, and so we haven't, uh, we, we decided to figure out how to operate and understand the basic mechanics of it first before moving into an on-chain environment. So there's an openness to figuring out how to do that um, and, and find the right way to integrate, but we thought it was really important to, yeah, to figure out what those things actually were behind the scenes and to build them ourselves in order to really, yeah, know what we want to need it from a, a software platform or an infrastructure like a DAO. Is that a good answer to your question, Christoph? Yeah. Cool. Anyone else? Any Ben? Go for it. So I'm super happy to see Justin. I'm super happy to see you here. I was just thinking about some of the original founding members through the last few years that took up the reins at different times. And Samara Trust, I think, is really beautiful because you know the the recognition of the need to coordinate was there for everybody, and you guys doing it in such a uh, you know, the Samara Trust was, it held up the yin aspect of coordinating. You guys were such, had a, such a gentle nature to all this before it was, you know, the rules. And I mean, even still, like now we have the rules, but you guys weren't caught up on the rules, but you organized your governance and your meetings so efficiently. And, and it was great to see you guys start using the tools like Notion and how to agree and why to agree and to use you know, because it's exactly what we were all talking about. And you you kept people, I think, engaged, you, know, you and Tyler and Trent, and, and even if you were not really present in some of the things. So I appreciate, you know, what I see is all the different people that have held space up until now and still do. There's so many amazing things. There's so many things that people want to get in on. And just the basics of human coordination and caring for each other has really been the glue and you guys showed that that is the basics the trust and that is people getting to know each other getting to really 
like I want to travel to to meet this person. I want to I care about what this person cares about. And I want to go long term with these people, these humans that I am now in integral connection with. And I want to thank you for for you guys doing that in Samara. So that's what I wanted to reflect on is what you guys brought to me and what I saw that you brought to the ecosystem as a whole during that period of time where it was kind of well, it's been in flux, but that at that particular stage. So that's what I want to reflect on. Man, I could cry. Thank you. <laughs> I just touched my heart from the front to the back. But dude, it's meaningful. And I think a lot of, yeah, a lot of people don't see it or recognize it. So I, you know, like, thank you for, you know, just staying in and making the connections you made because a lot of the things you do in private, a lot of things that we do just making connections because we have that heartfelt thing. It is seen everything that Reiki's put into this from the beginning, you know, like I've been a critic and I've, you know, but I'm so appreciative of what each and every one of us from the depth of our heart has just tried to do simply and practically and continually. Anyway. Yeah. I'll stop with that. I'm very thankful for everyone here. Well, uh, I'm assuming you're putting your time towards this, Ben, just as my facilitator role. I'm um, just keeping those rules in there, <laughs> noticing the irony there. Um, I want to add to this to give context for people who are new. Samara, which the word means, it's like the, the flying seeds. It's how to spread seeds. So I don't know if people have seen those like helicopter seeds. Those are Samara. So it came out as this idea, like how to spread the seeds. Um, but it was a very human centric and very interpersonal centric organization that formed within the seeds community. And as they just shared, they haven't set up a DAO yet. They've been more using other tools for how they coordinate. Uh, but that was actually one of the challenges in seeds early on is there was groups like Samara doing incredible work for the movement, but it wasn't necessarily being recognized as much as we, or at least I'm speaking very personally here. I don't feel like those members were getting recognized as much as other groups that were within seeds were. And that was one of the first challenges that we ran into is we didn't have the, the right tools to effectively account for all these different contributions and who was showing up. So I think that's one of the main reasons we entered into a winter phase all those many, you know, however long ago is because we saw those challenges and those inequalities and we wanted to correct them before we, you know, grew this out even further. So I do think that's one of the main topics I would love to continue talking on today. And if we want to keep extending on this, um, I ran out of the time. So does anyone else want to put more time towards this topic? <laughs> You can take my time towards that topic. OK, awesome. Uh, then maybe you can ask a question or bring your perspective of what you'd like to hear, Natalie. Sure. Um, I am, um, I suppose, wondering how many people do you have involved in Samara and how local are they to each other? So are you dealing with internationals or are you more or less a, a tight community? So we kind of think about Samara as um, a field. Um, so there's a diversity of Samara is probably somewhere around 30, 35 total contributors to Samara the field. And many of them have their own kind of organization or entity that's offers some, offering services to different ecosystems like other generators or the, the Gene Keys community or local land-based projects like here in Guatemala, Tutukilal. Um, so each individual has a kind of an organizing body around itself. And we kind of operate in a field that's both kind of autonomous and yet collective. And then Samara Trust is kind of an actual, I think, uh, what I say is it's a really kind of core organization, which has eight total members right now. And so they have kind of seven founding members, as well as we added an additional member uh, about a month or two ago um, who was working in Seas Commons Allen. And this was a chance for us to really kind of practice how do we have move closer to being able to have a real kind of DAO structure um, beyond just the kind of diverse field of people coordinating in the kind of um, yin way that Ben was mentioning. Um, as we kind of build and, and create an infrastructure for ourselves to be able to, to, to operate and organize and contribute and value contributions and, and create content and storytelling um, that allow for others to be able to see and work with and, and follow along and also find their own way through, through our own experience. Um, does that make sense, Natalie? Yes, it does. And I guess it brings me to the next question. What's the uniting factor? Like if you have all these different pods, what's bringing you together? I think what we uniquely found in Samara, it's not actually unique to us at all, was that there was a, a, a spirit, something about the nature of, 
of what it took to be able to really live a regenerative life <laughs> and do so in this kind of decentralized, distributed way, you know, this kind of multi-generational global group of people who had never met in person, what really brings us together? And I think it was kind of the spirit, and I, I call it the spirit of trust, that if we do take time to know each other, care about each other, uh, have these experiences which are, which are hard and, and, and technical and operational, but also, you know, heartfelt, that through this building of, of this trust that it mattered, that it does. And we found that, you know, it, it did. A lot of these relationships and bonds have been extremely long lasting, have led to in-person connections, new organizations, but also have been kind of spread throughout, yeah, our, our neighboring networks and it kind of had an impact or effect on, on, on how they operate and what it means to really do this work in the world. Um, so. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your questions. We still have another minute for the time that Natalie gave. So um, anything else you'd like to share on this, Justin? Uh, 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 but I'm happy to answer any questions or, or to kind of uh, pu push it back at the, at the hole in the right way. Um, but not at the moment, no. Does anyone else have any question they would like to bring about Samara? Do you have a time frame of when you want to move on chain or even a way to evaluate is on chain a necessary step? Yeah, we really learned from Reiki and the Haifa movement, both about how do you do a fork? So we kind of created Samara Trust from a fork from Samara, soft fork, right? So backwards compatible, not actually technical, but more moving the data and the ideas and the infrastructure away. So people could always be a part of it, but not necessarily have to decide as a whole. And so this last kind of season of development of Samara Trust has actually allowed us to have a sense of governance, a sense of organizational structure, a sense of membership that now would actually allow us to be pretty able to go onto a DAO and be able to actually use the tool well. And so I think we're actually, we've kind of taken a winter season off. We had a lot of learning journeys. It was very intense for two years. And so we've kind of taken our winter season as well, learning from the season's model. And so I think we're actually coming to a place of springtime based on what I've kind of seen from the activity and the communication that people are kind of getting active and ready to go for another round. And uh, so I'm really excited to, 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 to bring some of that energy back into, the, in, into this. So maybe soon um, as spring arrives. Uh, can I ask a, uh, can I use my time for, to yeah, ask yeah. a well, quick we'll question? Um, go for it. Okay, Justin. I think one thing that I heard from Trent is that you guys learned a lot about human design and the gene keys and archetypes and stuff. And right now I think there's a lot of DAOs in the moment of recognizing and formalizing the contributions of others and acknowledging internal traits and strengths and weaknesses. And that's one thing if you guys have to share and to bring your knowledge and experience that you formalized within, because I know Trent was full of sharing when I talked to him after uh, being down in Mexico for a while. So I just wanted to air that connection that I caught from the work you guys have done about now coming back into the ecosystem, that that's a current energy that may be needed is uh, that alignment with internal identity, role archetypes, and um, self-expression uh, and sharing. Yeah, maybe one of the core inquiries I think that I'm, I'm holding and, and kind of carrying through for this next kind of cycle of, of work is how can we kind of use these mechanisms of human exchange and do so in a way that honor the individual, uh, provide for the community and serve the totality of humanity. And, and I think that honoring the individual, part of that takes is understanding what the individual is and as an individual, what are their actual needs, who are they, and helping them figure out who they are to be able to actually be able to offer their gifts and talents and services. And that part of that's a developmental challenge, right? Just being able to have a sense of self-reflection, to be able to know who you are, to name what your gifts are and figure out how to bring them is a very challenging thing to do in, in this kind of decentralized activity context because everyone has to be their own leader. But to be able to be autonomous and to be a leader takes takes developments and skills and, and, and feedback and coaching in, in a way. And so we really kind of learned how to pra practice, how to empower the individual to see that in themselves, but also how to give that reflective space and that mirroring space between each other so we could all help each other kind of facilitate individual growth, facilitate the development of our community, but also continue to ask ourselves, how is what we're experiencing internally going to affect and change and serve externally uh, as service in the world? And so this is kind of this kind of um, a pattern or, 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 or a skill set that we kind of 
looked at. And I think, it, you know, I can say more another time, but that's kind of what we use human design and gene keys and other kind of developmental profiles to do is to facilitate that human development at the individual level in community um, in order to kind of point to or look at how we can each individually and collectively be a service to the whole. Uh, incredible. <laughs> ben, any other responses with your time? No? Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more context here for those who are a little bit new and watching this. I'm going to share my screen and we will show what a, a DAO actually looks like because this is what they might be able to move into and also where human design might come into as roles within one of these DAOs. So we'll show the Seeds Collaboratory because this is just getting started. So, you know, Samara Trust, which is right here, which might extend out, but it looks like it's just getting started too. All of these are just getting started, really. <laughs> so what you could do with human design, and when we talk about regeneration, I think this is a big part of it, is we're regenerating ourselves first. Well, in addition to, along with everything else we're regenerating, right? So communities can get set up, and part of the organization style, which is an organization asset, might be role archetypes, which could be designed around the human design, what the human needs, and who they are, and what might best help them show up. So that might be the actual archetypes that govern your organization based on who you are and what your purpose in this world might be, right? Uh, does that align with what you were thinking, Justin? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think I think what we kind of found and what I still think is true is like to be able to fill in those blank spaces, to give it a proper title, to give it a proper description takes a little bit of, of work and contemplation, uh, both as, as an individual of what you can really bring and how to talk about it, but also as a collective of what's really needed to be able to be of value to, to the DAO itself. Um, does that make sense? So kind of the, the, the nature of being able to answer these questions took a little bit of pre-work, but I do think that we're moving to a place where we can actually answer these questions now and be able to fill in these, these in a meaningful way. Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And this is uh, reflecting back where I said we, one of the main reasons we went into that uh, winter season was because we didn't have this tool to be able to account for that. So again, people were showing up, adding a lot of value, but this screen you're seeing right here where you can actually recognize either by giving voice to the organization or actually paying them in a cash equivalent token or even distributing seeds, all of this ability wasn't here yet. So I think that's a big reason why a lot of organizations that are getting started, uh, Justin spoke about a couple, Renaissance Explorer and Tomorrow Trust. Um, someone's got a lot of background noise, so if they can mute themselves, that'd be great. Um, was that's, This tool wasn't here. So what you're actually seeing here is the Seeds Collaboratory, who will have the ability actually to distribute seeds for roles that are filling, that are being filled within the Seeds community. So you can put it in here and actually give that role a dollar value and say, actually, we don't have any money to pay up front. So we're going to defer 100% of that compensation for showing up in this community. But then that means we're actually distributing seeds to these people who are helping grow the movement, right? So this is one of the tools that we needed that we didn't quite have that's coming online right now, which is why I think we're getting closer to entering a spring season. And that's one more thing I want to have us all think about during this call. And we'll talk about this. One of the last things is, you know, are we ready to leave the winter season and enter into a spring season? And if no one knows what that means, we can also, you know, feel free to put your hand up and we could talk about that. All right, so I'll stop sharing my screen here. And I think that's the end of our time for this topic. So we will either, we can extend this if anyone wants to put their time towards this or feel free to put your hand up if you want something else. So does anyone want to put their time towards this topic and keep going? Okay, then um, whoever else wants to bring a question or thought, please put your hand up. Justin, I uh, deeply love you. Thank you for showing up and everything you've been doing. And yeah, not just doing, but everything you've been being. Uh, Christoph, you got your hand up. Take it over. Yes, my, my question is uh, if after three years we did not reach a consensus for uh, a seeds tokenomics, should we move to another group? I've been exploring different groups like a region network or the frequency. There are maybe 10 or 20 very interesting groups in the regenerative finance. Uh, so uh, the question is, wh why are, 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 are we not be able to reach a consensus on the tokenomics? 
And should we continue to look for a consensus or should we join another group which has a good uh, tokenomics? That's a great question. Um, does anyone have any thoughts or reflections to that? Justin, you got your hand up? Yeah, I think this is not an educated, fully educated answer, but I think my, my sense is that something about seeds is possible. And one of the challenges I found when working in seeds was that we always looked for like movement wide consensus. And it was almost impossible to reach because of just the nature of that level of coordination and, and decision making and sense making. Um, but I think the way that seeds is established is actually designed to allow for micro ecosystems and micro climates and economies to be able to be built. And so I think instead of looking for global social consensus, having a hyper local, even if it's not actually physically local based economy that you develop and you test and you grow outwards is a, is a, is a really real possibility that may support finding the structure in the system and being able to use the tools and resources in a way that brings about an economy that may serve the whole. But I think trying to do it from the top down doesn't really work here. And I think that's one of the greatest challenges that we face was trying to, to, to do that. It's just not, yeah. Beautifully. Um, anyone else would like to respond to this? Uh, Nadine, go for it. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me well? Thank we you. can hear you. So, so Christoph, regarding our, thank you for your contributions and your thoughts regarding our tokenomics, I am to think and feel like and we have the best ones uh, compared to the other um, cryptocurrencies out there and um, especially um, we have a tokenomic that is intended to be used in the real life and uh, in a daily basis and um, what we were missing a year one and a half years ago was a, a marketplace where we can uh, have utility for our token and use it in our daily life um, especially when i was traveling around south america and um, around the world, everyone wants to use seeds. And then they ask me, where where can I spend it? So um, we have um, now, we are focusing more um, on the marketplace development. And um, there is a beautiful tool called Local Scale, which is a marketplace. And um, I would like to share with us here my screen for a moment, if this works where we have now a prototype for a marketplace. This is a global marketplace in a local scale marketplace. So the global marketplace is only for services, remote services. So you can get like music teaching here, you can get um, project management um, or um, some, everything that you could do over a Zoom meeting or over a um, remote, over phone, you could offer it here and then you can sell your services right away on this marketplace and just start using seeds right and you can see the seeds price here you can purchase it over the platform and do your transaction over this marketplace so this is my invitation for us is um, to start offering our services on this marketplace and and then yeah just start using seeds as soon as we have utility the price will get uh, higher and the tokenomics will make sense. Any other thoughts for Christoph? Or does anyone want to, we're about to run out of time. Does anyone want to give their time to this to keep going on the seeds tokenomics questions? Then what I will do is I'll just take a moment here to recap this. I will share my screen. Can you guys see this slide right here? Yeah, we can. Yep. Um, so Christoph, my response to your question about the seeds tokenomics is I think a lot of currencies are going to be created is there was this idea that there'd be one seeds that all local communities and organizations might use too. But that model has evolved over the years to where seeds the currency that we're still having right now will be more the currency that connects communities. 
but this is where the rainbow seeds came out, which the rainbow seeds was this idea that we can have lots of different seeds and every community can create their own. And this is actually what we're seeing here. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can really see this graphic. Bring it to the front. Is the lighter green color would be the global seeds, the current currency that we have right now. And it's really the interchange currency between these bioregional currencies, these local currencies, et cetera. So this is what we're working on. And I would have the video that I would show and you guys can go and watch that. We show in the light wallet how you can have all the different currencies already and how organizations that are getting set up and launching their DAOs are launching their own currencies. So this is really what we saw with seeds as we started off with this idea that we'd have one currency and then we evolved into this idea that we're gonna have a lot of different currencies. And then ultimately the seeds currency will really just be the one that helps connect them. But right now, and what Nadim showed is we can have a global marketplace where we start using this currency right now. And even local communities can still use the seeds currency should they want to. So I don't know if the answer really is, is like, you know, is seeds gonna be the one to rule them all? Should we use others? I, you know, in a regenerative diverse economy, there's lots of different currencies and ways of flowing value and recognizing contributions, et cetera. So I really think that's the way that Seeds is going into this really diverse multi-currency, you know, multi-type of exploration and explore, experiments type of system. Um, does that answer your question in any way, Christoph? Uh, personally, I don't believe in a local currency because uh, if there are not a, a, a group big enough to use a currency, it's very difficult. Are, we had many experiences with local currencies. And when you reach uh, 200, 300 people, it's not enough to, for the currency to get value. But it's just my experience. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Does anyone else have? Justin, you've got something. We've got about a minute more on this topic. Yeah, I have a question for Christoph because I, 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 what he said really resonated with me, and I wonder, have you seen it, or do you have like a, like a story around what happens when there are multiple of those two hundred to three hundred groups that then coordinate together? So, have you seen that happen in a network effect, and and, and does that feel like a, a possibility of where of where the solution? Like, I, I just that's what came to mind. But I wonder how, how that lands for you and what that brings up. No, of course, I, I don't know any example of uh, coordination like this. Uh, you you have seen no difficulties to coordinate between uh, some group in Nigeria, from South Africa, from Europe, and uh, I I hope it it will be possible in the future. But uh, international uh, relations they are very slow because there is such a gap in communication, in languages, in a uh, way to do things. Uh, there is no reason that it's going faster in a uh, uh, blockchain economy than in the traditional economy. And you can see that to reach uh, an international agreement, it, it often takes 20 years. Well, hopefully we can move a little bit quicker than that. <laughs> uh, Felipe, would you like to use your time to extend this conversation, keep going? Or would anyone else like to? Before yes, we... I would like. Yep. Then take it away. Uh, okay, so first, I do agree many of you, and we want to see this regenerative coin moving around, but it's not an easy task. It's not something that should <laughs> be easy. One, one step of that is to get to all the communities that are already thinking in alternative economies, and they might already have one alternative currency or not, but it's really difficult to coordinate and to put that all together. But at the same time, it's worth it to try it and to put at least some some examples that people can start trying. I know one example here in Latin America that is in different countries, but they use like the same technology, but still not the same coin. And it's not really easy for them to understand how they can be traveling using the local tokens even if it's like the same kind of community or model so yeah it's it's complicated but at the same time i feel seeds has this mission to really try to put together different solutions on the table not just one like it can be okay you can create your own local 
uh, token, but at the same time, we offer you these other models that are more uh, global, uh, interdependent, let's say. And, and yeah, basically going back to the specific questions of the actual seeds token nomics is it's not it, one of i guess you already know but maybe some of you don't, don't but the real problem was like the the first uh, how do you say <laughs> distribution of seeds was kind of uh, yeah, see. yeah <laughs> was not really thought how it was going to be the harvest and, and what we some of us feel is that the harvest is is somehow not well planned and in that sense it, ha it, it has a, char a charge from the past that needs to be revised and maybe it's starting all again uh, it's starting all over again and well that's where where we are in the eco to, uh, currency group of seats and and that's yeah. what we want to to move forward in in probably in diverse solutions and not only one Uh, Chris, did you want to respond to that, or did anyone else want to respond to Felipe? Uh, I did then, if there's a gap here. Uh, I absolutely agree that we kind of needed a, a relaunch of seeds, if you will. And the best way of launching seeds, we would have already had 500 organizations and 10,000 people and a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of activity to first initiate the currency. But of course, when this idea was getting started, there was only a few dozen of us. So we couldn't do that from the beginning. So this idea of being able to have a version two where we could have that more distributed initial launch is really appealing. And that's one of the options on the table in the Seeds Collaboratory is to launch Seeds 2.0, looking back and saying, what are all the different organizations and people that helped us get here? And then that's the initial distribution. Because you know, our false assumption getting started was that Haifa would be that DAO that everyone who's really working on seeds could be a part of. But we quickly learned the necessity for boundaries. You know, like Haifa is an organ in the body. When a body is growing, it doesn't just have one massive organ, it has a whole bunch of different organs. And that's a thing we didn't necessarily understand. So that's when we look back, we say, actually, we needed a whole bunch of organs to be ready. Just like, you know, when you're making a baby in a womb. You have to wait until all the organs are fully developed before you birth it. But what we kind of did is we birthed the baby early with one heart and it was a little bit deformed and it didn't work very well. And we learned what it takes to actually birth one of these things. So now we kind of are going back and saying, okay, we actually need all of these organs in place and all of the circularity in place before we launch this effectively. And I think that's part of the learning and why we've spent so much time, like, you know, re tinkering the DNA over the last few years. So that when we relaunch it, we can have a successful birth rather than a, you know, another learning lesson, if you will. Um, that's my thoughts on that. Would anyone like to put their time towards extending this conversation and keeping it going? I'm going to throw in just for a second to um, we're going to actually have a conversation about this Thursday in between the wishing well and the currency meeting. There's um, actually a special conversation that everybody's invited to to talk about using are we ready to go to the marketplace with these and how does it happen so i just want to throw that in there it's this thursday in between wishing well and currency meeting awesome thanks ben and also feel free to use the announcement space in the seeds discord to share any of these calls and other spaces of getting involved um all right, does anyone want to dedicate their time towards talking about the seeds tokenomics question a little bit more? Eric, I see you. Nope, okay, then we'll move on to the next thing. So if you have anything you'd like to bring, please put your hand up. And Stephen, I see you got your hand up. So I'll send it back to you, see if your mic's working. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, nice to connect with everyone here. The the regeneration movement uh, and and thanks Reiki and the whole seeds network for uh, the passion and time you guys put into this it's a uh, it's very well appreciated as a, a whole community um, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that um, that I'm doing uh, in the space uh, for those who don't who don't know me I've been in 
uh, the regenerative space for about 11, 12 years. Um, I'm big in the hemp space. Uh, we're just launching the Hemp Innovation Center. Um, what I've done is compiled a network of uh, over a dozen of the top hemp companies that all have technologies, everything from hemp plastic to hemp bricks to hemp insulation to hemp batteries and more. And uh, the Innovation Center basically is going to be a liaison for these companies. We'll help sell their patents um, and technologies. Uh, we'll help sell their products and services. Uh, we'll also uh, have two top scientists in the space that can make anything from diapers to airplanes out of hemp uh, that will help do future innovations and R&D with. And then overall business development uh, help with uh, raising funds and connecting partnerships and getting offtake and even getting grants. Um, so uh, you can find that uh, information out and, and message me at hempinnovationcenter.com. Uh, it's been years in the making. It feels good to start uh, getting it out there. Um, we've kind of compiled a network of all the, the hemp OGs, I call them. Um, so if you want to find out more, I'll put the, the, the list in the, the website in the chat. Uh, you can contact us directly there. Uh, we're also doing a, a hemp dome project at a festival called Building Man. Uh, Building Man's in Green River, Utah, next to Moab. Uh, it's been going on for about 14 years now. I think this is the 14th season. Uh, really great dude. Uh, they're doing a Future City Challenge this year. Uh, to design the the new future of eco villages, um, we're doing a hemp dome. Uh, we're doing a, a we got hemp rebar uh, for the structure, uh, and then we're doing hemp bricks. Uh, one of my colleagues, Stephen Clark, with uh, Heaven Grown, uh, is like a master dome and earth builder. Uh, so we're looking to build a, a low cost dome that will last forever. Uh, the hemp uh, that'll be self insulated and heated. Um, and uh, you can find the tickets and information there at jankstars.com. Uh, it's at the Jankstar Ranch. Uh, if anyone knows anyone that would like to go, uh, it's a week-long workshop uh, with a three-day music fest. Uh, they have, uh, uh, it's, it's Burning Man style, so bring in your water, bring in your food, bring in your tents. Um, but uh, there will be food provided at a daily fee. I think around 35 bucks a day there's food provided for people. I'm really excited about that, um, all that hemp stuff. And then last thing real quick, uh, I've been working on regenerative gaming for a while, uh, trying to play for the planet. Uh, I got a game, Earth Defenders, I've been working on. Uh, it uh, teaches permaculture uh, how to grow trees and build eco-villages. And then there's these tree giants that come try to destroy your property. Um, I'm looking to open the game up to a DAO uh, just because uh, the development's gone slower than I'd like with my, my current team. Uh, so there's even talks of, uh, of uh, working together with Haifa on the regenerative gaming DAO, uh, building games that educate people how to be self-reliant. Um, and then we also, I just got back from East Denver. I'm looking to pick up a couple of uh, major blockchain companies as being... Uh, uh, I pitched to them that they need to make transactions, plant trees, and make all their blockchains green. Uh, it'd be cool to work on that, but uh, I see my time's up. I feel. It's per perfect timing to notice that. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Would anyone like to put their time towards adding on to this, responding to Stephen, or asking any questions? Then I will say thanks, Stephen, for all of that. And again, feel free to put an announcement and share all the awesome stuff that you're up to. An incredible human, thank you for sharing. Um, Eric, I see you up. Are you wanting to speak and take the floor? No, I was just uh, putting a thumbs up to what Stephen was talking about. I want to investigate what he's doing. That sounds awesome. OK. Does anyone else have a new topic they would like to bring? Um, yeah. Hi, hello, Mikey. Hello, everyone. Uh, see you guys. Yeah, my heart is beating now. I was, uh, but yeah, um, I want to share not. I want to share about uh, the work that we have been doing in the bio region, Brazil, and it's it was uh, born uh, right before the pandemic. Right, right after, and was a cultural uh, manifestation, and I was part, and uh, we have grow up in a in a way that we have uh, a community fund, actually, 
and with uh, uh, when we did a map from the everyone, we got uh, 145 people right in the beginning. So it's very meaningful uh, for for me to 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 know that was a uh, uh, know the right path. And uh, I discovered this uh, last year uh, a platform with Ben Roberts. It's called Picochet. And we adapt for, for using for our bioregion, but also for the organization called AAG, that's Articulation of Agroecology from Rio de Janeiro, from the whole state. So uh, we're going to launch this platform to help us to, to have these re regions uh, connected, but it's a, a very simple integration with uh, Google Calendar and Zoom and give give uh, for people the 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 access to to create the events events where they, they are and and creating these working groups and we, I create an app that uh, could easily people use. I would happy to 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 share and and explore with with people who want also uh, these tools. But yes and. and more uh, i could say that uh, i'm see that everything is happening in a, a very strong uh, positive way for 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 organization here in, in, in into working together and doing projects also but to yes collaborations is what it's yeah and i see this here today very 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 nice so um, I passed my three minutes. Sorry, I will ha have some links. I'll get some links for for this share. Thanks. You didn't quite pass your three minutes. We still got about forty-five seconds. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts around what Gal you're sharing, or bioregions in general, or anything like that? I do. Uh, I will extend on this a little bit because Regen Civics, which is one of the organizations within SEEDS, is focusing specifically on land-based communities. I know Yao, ja you're a part of that down in Brazil. Um, so those who aren't familiar with that, I'm just going to do a quick overview of that group. So here you can see Um, some of the projects that are part of that. So we, these are physical land-based communities. Can you guys see the screen already? Yeah, we yes. Can. Yeah, so here's the first season we started last year. We're about to start season two in two days, actually. So if you'd like to be part of that, just uh, go to the Region Civics down. I'll share some links for that if you need it. Uh, so these are the first projects and each one of these are looking at being a bioregional center. So they are looking at their bioregion and how do you coordinate that bioregion to build regenerative local circular economies? What does that look like? So then we've got all these physical communities, all of different shapes and sizes and purpose, etc. And we've been walking through how do you set up the legal system for it? How do you design the economy? How do you make decisions? Like what roles are you picking? How do you see humans? What does that actually mean? etc. Um, all with the idea of creating this thing we call a game guide so that when people want to actually show up and play, it's just like playing any game. There's, you know, quick instruction manual of how you actually participate, how you go around, how you collect tokens, you know, what it means to participate, etc. Just like any game. So that was what the first season was all about. And the second season will be actually launching our DAOs and creating a shared ecosystem between them all so that all of us could, you know, fundraise together and use similar tools so that we can learn together. And that if you're earning tokens in one of these projects, you can easily swap those tokens for other project tokens so that you can travel the world visiting these different sites and being able to have a shared source of uh, recognition, access, et cetera. So that was me trying to do it in a very short period of time. And I think I'm using my time for this. So does anyone have any questions or thoughts or reflections on you know, bioregional economies in general or region civics or anything like that. Nadim, you got your hand up. Yeah, I have a beautiful reflection about why are we doing what we are doing and, and with the, 
with the bioregional economies. And um, I would like to share with us the grassroots economics. These are one of our strategic partners and um, they are implementing these uh, local currencies in Africa. And this is what you get. You get 77% increase in trust. You get 340% increase in gifting, right? So this is why we are doing what we are doing. Mm. Um, this is the universal basic income is there. It's in, inside this, right? Even taxes, paying taxes. You don't need to pay taxes anymore because the community is giving. Mother Earth is giving all the time, right? You get a 70% food security. So this is why the local circular economies are so important. Beautiful. Anyone else? Thoughts, reflections? Ricky, could you, I don't know if I have time or not, but I, I'm just going to throw my, my, my question out there, which is like, can you talk to me about, or does it make sense to kind of presence? How did that first round of the regions, I mean, I watched like the videos on YouTube and kind of saw that, but I wondered how, how, how was that as an outcome or how did that, how did that end up turning out for those um, participating member organizations? And, and what are you looking for in this round too? as far as like next round of learning, but also, um, yeah, I just wondered how, how that went in and, and what's what's new or what's up for this next round. Um, sure. Does anyone want to put their time towards me responding to this? <laughs> I don't think I have time left, but I would love to hear the answer. <laughs> Uh, I actually think then we've all gone through, so maybe I will use my second round of time and then everyone's got a new round of time right now. So we'll, we'll say we've done one round and everyone's got their new time allotment now. Um, so a quick response to that, I'm doing a more an extended video series that was part of the slides I was just showing you. I plan to start launching them now starting at this Equinox, so I'll start putting those videos out. Um, the main takeaways for season one was Season one was really an exploration of how we create those game guides. There's a lot to consider. Like I said, we went over legal systems, we went over economic design, decision-making, organization design. Like there's a lot to consider when creating a new type of economic system. So the first season was really just exploring all of those considerations and helping projects get an understanding of the scope of what you know, needs to go into this. So a lot of it was a lot of learning. And then people really needed time to sit on that. So that's why we stopped progress is it was like, okay, that was a lot. We need to digest this. We need to go back to the drawing board and start working on what that looks like. So that's what groups have been doing for the last, you know, six or seven months since the last one ended. So the season two is actually going to be launching it. So the, the Haifa DAO tools are now ready and that's where we're going to be starting to launch the DAOs. So it'll be going in there and actually setting them up. So setting up the roles, start acknowledging people for what they've done and start actually putting some of these designs into practice. Second, it'll be about launching the Regen Civics Alliance. So I'll go back over to here and show you a screen of this. So this is open for other organizations. This might be very relevant to you, but here's the first season of organizations. So each one of these orgs is helping out projects in some type of capacity and getting started whether it's the, you know, the Haifa tools that we just talked about actually organizing themselves or the United Planet game, which is helping bring in new players and helping them understand who they are and what their role is. Or maybe it's permit tours and actually launching you know, festivals on the ground to set up gardens and build houses. Or maybe it's the Universe Land Trust, which helps groups set up legal entities or spiritual ministries, which gives all sorts of you know, great legal powers. Or Nestor for actually organizing and decision making or moral imaginations, which is literally dreaming up what that new you know, civilization could look like, etc. So each one of these is a different organization helping projects along the way. So the other part of season two will be setting up this alliance, which means we're going to have one DAO that represents all of us so that we could also fundraise together. Because a lot of time and each one of these projects is going towards trying to you know, talk to investors, get them to fund them so they can organize themselves, etc. But we have a more complete story when we all come together and we say we're all playing a different part. We're all one organ in this big organism and maybe we can fundraise together. So this is really also part of season two is setting up this alliance so we can better help all of the projects through their whole journey. 
because that's really what our goal is, you know, long term for this alliance is to have all the organizations in place, the tools in place, the templates in place, so that when a group's like, yep, we're tired of capitalism and the failing civilization, we want to do something new, we can actually help them through the you know, very beginning of ideating what that project looks like all the way through actually launching it and being successful you know, long term. So it's about putting together the foundations for that is really what season two is about. Um, thoughts, questions, reflections on that? Justin, did that answer your question at all? Yeah, super cool to see that. And, and just the thing I had as a re reflection or a thought was, um, it's interesting and kind of beautiful to see that what was once kind of external facing alliances, like really trying to go out there and make something happen in other organizations has now become like an attractor force. And so you've attracted these organizations and there's a sense of like almost cultivating them or incubating them or nurturing them from the inside outwards as an alliance itself. And so it's a very different approach to alliances and making this network grow and work. So I think that's really kind of cool to see the, the change in direction and flow and to see that it has this kind of potential possibility of really kind of um, having this embedded kind of culture, movement, belief system, ideology, elements, structures that I think will really kind of support the it being successful in the long term or just being even greater learning about how this how this works for others. Um, so yeah, just seeing that. What yeah. I love about this is it unifies without homogenizing. I think that's one thing by having these separate network or separate separate structures is we can learn from each other in so many ways, but we don't become just one thing ex so exclusive. And that's I think that's beautiful. And, you know, Cheers for all the work you're doing out there. Uh, couldn't agree more. And just to share that one more thing, this is our tagline here in Regen Civics is growing the diversity of regenerative realities. So that's really what regeneration is, is diversity. So the key and the idea is, is having a whole bunch of different approaches with different cultures, different ecological systems, different people, you know, and have that diversity so that truly when people show up to this, they can find something that really does reflect their values, their needs, and you know, what they're trying to accomplish in life. Right. Um, yeah. So huge part of it. Thank you for that. Uh, Felipe. Sorry, <laughs> can you see the screen? We did, you stopped sharing it though. Okay, well, I wanted to share that. Actually, yeah, basically we, we've been studying these uh, possibilities of coming together and we basically find, okay, it's like a kind of hybrid model where diversity have all the possibilities to, to go around. This is what we put together as the main framework. Uh, well, I, I think I don't have to explain, but maybe just in case somebody does not really like people wanting to experience and visit these places, all these places, or even virtually having uh, online courses or whatever, incubators. The people that actually are looking for where to live, uh, where, where, where to put their roots, their, plant their seeds, people that want to support or probably even <laughs> looking to get some money which well we feel isn't it shouldn't be them the motor for for investing on these projects but but could be more like getting the the goods and services as as the return uh allied projects that you were mentioning like all these network of, of possible allies that can bring their knowledge and and experience to the table and people that want to put their their time and energy into this network uh, so i'm taking my three minutes actually to present what we have been advancing in general so this is the main framework that it could be any platform it could be we, we i feel we should uh, look into a platform that can really put this uh, together like the interactions of all these models uh and yeah very fast i could share the um, well the projects that we are developing especially in south america we for now we only have some here in the in the website 
but we, here it's like we want to do a regeneration project more fo more focus on that here we want to do a school for for many children um here like an eco village mm, uh well <laughs> just a little bit and this is the one that we've been putting more energy and time where where you can already find all this happening uh, and yeah basically that's Ah, uh, yeah, the, sorry, the, I just missed one thing. This is the, also another way to see very, very synthesized way what we want to achieve with all this uh, that I shared, that is, well, like the holistic integral programs that in, weaves all together the housing, the communities, the experiences, the environmental protection, the social and cultural impact, mainly through education or kind of education, long life learning programs, and the regenerative investment and economies like seeds. Thanks. Uh, I love your designs, Felipe, and I want to give you a bunch of recognition and appreciation for being a part of this journey for so long. And, you know, for those who don't know, Felipe has been a part of the Regen Civics journey. So everything she's showing is what's informed a lot of Regen Civics as well. So I want to give you acknowledgement for everything you've been working on over these years. So deep gratitude for you and the, the work you've been doing. Anyone for questions, thoughts, reflections for Felipe? Quick response, yes, this is being recorded and it will be shared. Then I wanna say thank you, Felipe, you're incredible and feel free to share that out. And you'll also be hearing more about that in the region civics videos as you're one of the key alliances. So we'll be sharing more about how you can get involved there if you would like to as well. Um, Okay, anyone else have any thoughts or questions you'd like to bring? You do have your new three minutes and 33 seconds now. So if you've already gone before, that's fine. You can go again. So please put your hand up if you'd have anything you'd like to bring. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I feel that I could not uh, really share what I'm doing. It could be one minute. If you guys agree, can I share my screen? Yep, go for it. So uh, this would be the, the app, but the actual tools that we use inside the app that could can be uh, started in cell phone is the KikoChat. That is this platform that's made uh, up of uh, uh, Excel and create the the links that we can open inside the same website, right? So I can have like. Uh, Docs here, and it it was created for events, online events. But uh, the rooms of the Zoom, people who are in the inside the platform can can see who is online. You know, we can uh, enter here and see who is online. And also, that I said, this is for for the Arj. So we have Zooms for the regionals and. And we can open recent activities like it creates a circles, right? So each of these regions is one circle, but they use the same uh, tab of the zoom. It's it can create also some layers of uh, uh, people who who have to maybe uh, maybe in a form to get in the the, the circle, and then create a, a map of people that are. Uh, map it and they can share uh, uh, what they can what their needs and offers and it creates this it's may, maybe not so good as a, 